Welcome to the Beacon Podcast, where there is always a light in the darkness. And now, here are our host, Deborah Jane East and Rick Brown. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. It's been a long time no see. We have been on hiatus for a while due to my co-host, Rick Brown. He had a death in the family of a, a close family member. And so you know how that goes. There's a lot to do when you lose somebody in your family. So I've been sort of in limbo, but there's so much to address. I just couldn't stand myself anymore. So here I am. Now, I am excited to have my first guest on the Beacon podcast. Now, do you remember what our tagline is? There is always a light in the darkness. And there is. If you look for it, it is out there. And that is what this show wants to be. When everything is chaotic and you don't know which end is up, we want to be that light and shed some truth on what's going on. My guest today, let me tell you, I'm very, very impressed. It turns out that I've known her for a long time. She's one of my friends on Facebook. But let me tell you a little bit about her, and you'll see why I'm so excited about this show. Ari Koppel is a graduate of the University of Miami with a major in psychology and a minor in communications. While at the University of Miami, she worked in the Harold C. Urey Laboratory for paleo temperature research on projects that involved the study of pole shifts and ice ages, very relevant in what we're going through right now. She later attended Columbia University, New York, for her graduate studies and worked as the assistant to Dr. Robert Jastro director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, while serving as Jestro's teaching assistant at Dartmouth College, New Hampshire. Ari is the author of an international best-selling book, Spiritual Warfare and the Art of Deception, the Hijacking of Spirituality. Now you can see why I'm so excited about having this young lady to the show. Ari, I want to welcome you, and let's start from the beginning. You mentioned you were aware of a gift that you had at four years old. I want to ask you, how did that gift manifest to you, and how does that affect your life at present? Well, uh, Deborah, first let me start by saying thank you very much. Uh, I've been a, a huge fan of yours for many years, and then, of course, we became Facebook friends. So I just wanted to give you a, a shout out as well. You are a light warrior in the midst of this darkness. So thank you for having me on. I guess you you know when you're uh, very young that you're not a uh, part of the mundane, okay? At four, I just couldn't relate to my world, even though I was a youngster. I was very, very connected still to um, a much higher realm, shall we say. And I took all my direction and instructions from that. Yes, I had wonderful parents. Both my parents were uh, met because of um, a connection and a, a, a love for metaphysics and uh, higher spiritual knowledge. And so that's how they met. And I grew up in that environment, uh, very protected, very sheltered. And so even when, you know, I grew up from being four years old and, and kindergarten and things like that, I could not relate to kids my age. I just couldn't. I, I, I always knew from even four that I had a, a much bigger mission and that I was going to be part of, believe it or not, I knew about this even at four, something what we all know as the end times, right? So end times means what? The end, end of an era, the end of... Uh, a society the way we know it, the world as we know it, I was going to be part of that. And I needed to stay clean. Okay. I needed to stay 
out of the mundane. So I had a hard time, again, relating to kids because they were into parties and they were into this and that and the other. I was into spiritual stuff. I was reading the Bible, learning about religion, learning languages. And so that started, yes, at four. I didn't learn languages until later. But yeah, at one point in time, I was uh, speaking seven languages fluently. Um, What perception for someone so young? Very young. You know, I just delve into ancient history, into archaeology. So when I went to, gosh, I'm going to tell you, so when I went to college, I mean, I just, I was a perpetual student. I just wanted to learn everything about, you know, humanity, civilizations, about Atlantis, about, you know, ancient Egypt. And so, yeah, because you know what? I, I knew, I knew that, hey, humanity's been through this before. We've been through this again and again and again and again. And I'm just going to you know, tell you straight out. I am part of the, I guess, a voice in the wilderness. Trying oh, my to make gosh. It <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself yes. because I've said that many times. And yes. like you, when I was younger, you know what I wanted to study? Egypt. Egypt. Yes, Isn't that and I did all of my art uh, pertaining to that. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, who does this sound like? Right, oh, please right. Continue. You. Right. So so the reason I'm so drawn to that, right, is because I guess my goal and, and I would say my mission, if you want to call it that, I, I, I know that it is a mission, but I mean, I have to be very careful because I know more than likely the audience is, is, is just mixed with different uh, levels of knowledge, right, and where they come from and perceptions. Right. And but um, my goal and my mission is to awaken uh, humanity to the point where We don't keep making the same mistakes and over and over and over again, eon after eon, it's like, you know, you have all these civilizations that are uncovered and that they're found and buried in muck. And it's like, oh, my gosh, look at this. It's a mall. Oh, my gosh, look at the the windows. (laughs) It's like, you know, well, it could be the mall down my street. And, you know, in in a couple of, you know, thousands of years, somebody will find that mall. Right. I, I don't want us to keep doing the same thing. And one of the things that has happened in on the planet and the reason that, and I will go in how we kind of got connected here, is that, you know, we need to eradicate the, this virus. And it's not, it's not the coronavirus. That is just a minor distraction. There's something greater going on, a, a true virus that is demonic in nature. And it, it's it's taken over. And what my concern is that we have been almost anesthetized. Oh, we, we, it is an anesthesia of some, of some sort. That's a good between, way to put it. Right? Between all the multi-leveled stimulation that we have, the propaganda warfare, information warfare, the, the commodities that we're used to, because we don't farm anymore. We have specific people farming, and now even that's being taken in a way. So we're so used to, you know, going to the store, buying whatever we need, go to Amazon. We are so preoccupied and and it's, everything is so comfortable that we're not getting out of our comfort zone, right. And taking care of business. And what's happening is no different, Deborah, than uh, a a person who uh, goes to the doctor and they're diagnosed with a couple of cancer cells. And the doctor says, Hey, you know, we should really take care of this. We really need to remove those like now. Okay, I, I, we did the biopsy. We found a couple of cancer cells. We need to eradicate this now. We need to remove it now. And, or you can go to the doctor and say, hey, you know what, let's wait a little bit. Let's see how, how, how far it goes, right? And then the next thing you know, you didn't do anything. And then it, it's metastasized. And at that point, how do you control it? You can't, you can't. You know, the body is infected. So the body here is is the planet, okay? So we have a little cancer cell here and another one there, a, you know, a little social movement there, another one here. And, and, and the next thing, you know, it's all over, a little social movements all over. These are little cancer cells that no one has taken the time to say, oh, gosh, we got to remove this. We, we have to surgically remove this. And and how does that look in, in our world? Well, I mean, I'm not going to put words, but, you, you know, take a guess. You know, take a guess what needs to happen. Nobody's even done thought about that because everybody's too scared. It's always the next guy. So we're at a point where it, 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 we may be at the point of no return. And so I wanted to go on air because I've also had my own radio show. Also was on hiatus. 
because I'm so tired of, of, you know, getting on the bullhorn and screaming and nobody's really listening. And and I can't say they're really not listening, Deborah. They're they're listening. They understand it intellectually, but it, it can't stay in the mind. You see, they've created yeah. a spirit of fear. Yes. With, with people, especially the elderly and the children, uh, because things that were always considered normal are now considered abnormal, yes. you know, just like things that children did in school. And, you know, now there are topics that are in the schools that are really not even necessary. I mean, I saw things uh, yesterday in one of my grandchildren's schools and that they're teaching. And I'm thinking, why does my grandchild need to know this? You know, and it's like uh, elderly people, they have been cut off from the rest of the world, you know, because they were a target age for the coronavirus. So there is a lot of damage to the human spirit that has been perpetrated in the last three years. But let me tell you, dang, this show's getting good. I love it. (laughs) Big truth, lady. Well, you know, it. that that that's what we need to do. We have to, you know, be uh, authentic. We need to speak the truth and, um, you know, no more hiding. It, it, there is no more time. We've run out of time. And all I'm hoping is that by, you know, being able to speak out uh, these truths that are out there, I mean, a lot of people are probably seeing it and just kind of not voicing it. Maybe they're voicing it amongst each other. But really, there's in total inaction. And um, I don't know what, especially, look, the United States is in in such a critical point right now. We are being in, we're being invaded everywhere. We have so many fronts that we need to fight that we are, we don't even know what to start first. And this is all deliberate because you have to understand that the opponent is very clever very unified, very on purpose, very on task. Um, They're relentless. They don't sleep. Okay. They're unified in every way. We, on the other hand, the, what we call the good guys, right? Quote unquote, Mm -hmm. um, we're divided within ourselves. We're divided within ourselves with how to approach things, with how to do things. So we're perpetually what? Bringing people into congressional hearings and it's one hearing after another. And it's just, you know, verbal diarrhea. It's just talk. Nothing happens. There's a two-tiered justice system that, you know, is being, you know, the judges themselves, the police department, the, the FBI, everybody, everybody who um, can do anything about anything is completely in bed with all the cabal. I they're, totally, they're... I totally agree. And one thing I've noticed is they which is meaning the far left, they are creating the distractions. I mean, that is their weapon of choice is a distraction. Whenever it seems like the truth is coming out and people are being uh, investigated and being laid out for what they really are, then some distraction comes up and the distraction is always bogus. It's yes. always bogus. It's made up. It's uh, just to take up time and energy. And this keeps people from looking at what's really going on. And who are they using to do this? They are using the media. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the media is they have someone everywhere to perpetrate what they want. I think uh, a recent interview with Elon Musk, he said, I was surprised to find out that um, the government has open access to everyone's Twitter, even their private messages. Oh, sure. Right. So did we know that? We suspected it, but we didn't know it. That's only the tip of the iceberg, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, You know, the thing is that a lot of people are aware at at some level that uh, we're being spied on through our TVs, through our, uh, our smartphones, our laptops, you know, people are, you know, kind of aware of it already, even they're not fully aware of it. A lot of people just don't care because they're at the, you know, they're thinking, well, you know, I have nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide. 
You know, I'm a good person. I'm a patriot. I don't do, I'm out of my own business. Oh, that's common you, here in the South. You know? I can, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Agree with you. Well, you know, I'm from Tennessee right now. So, um, you know, I can kind of, even though I don't speak with a drawl, but, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I've got that New York accent I can't get rid of. But, um, but you know, the thing is that people are, don't understand that there, if there's a reason they're spying. Uh, you, you have no privacy anymore. And I just want to, again, and I know you and I have had a conversation um, off air, right? With respect to my background, I am Cuban born, okay? And, you know, I, my father, just, to, you know, just to give you some background, my father went to the university uh, with Fidel Castro. He was his uh, classmate, okay? They were good friends. And when Fidel took over, um, he approached my father. Now, I was born already. My, my, my brother was born. And um, he was approached to be part of his whatever, his cabinet, his goons, whatever you want to call it. Become a minister of whatever, whatever. And my father had to tell him, oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. I will. Um, uh, let me let me, you know, come get back to you uh, tomorrow or something like that. I'm just, you know, kind of give you the the, I, the gist of the whole thing. Sure. And uh, the tomorrow kind of never came because we he got us on a plane, everybody on a plane. And we left with the clothes that we had on and uh, some money, five bucks, five bucks in his pocket. And we came to the United States and it gave us refuge. OK. And from here, we he had to reinvent himself, not speaking the language. And he made a future for for, for the family. All right, gave us an education and everything. The reason I'm telling you that, Deborah, is because it's not just Cuba, right? So my 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 grandfather uh, fought in World War One. He was Russian. My grandmother on my father's side was Russian, and they fled Russia, communist Russia, to come to Cuba, and that's how that happened. On my mother's side, my grandfather was Chinese, so I've got communism in my veins, girl. You have got a mixed bag right there, young lady. I do. I do. But my my cellular memory, all right, my, my uh, I guess, genetic connections and whatnot, I smell a rat, okay, a million miles away. And I know how they operate. I know that a lot of my family, uh, not only, you know, back in, you know, World War One, but, you know, as recent as Cuba, you know, they're jailed, uh, you know, perpetually truly for life, um, for being a political, you know, they're political prisoners. So what you see here, for example, in J6, the, what happened to J6 prisoners, it's a message basically for um, all the patriots in the United States. Don't even think about, you know, raising up, you know, right, you know, rising together to create any type of of insurrection because we're going to jail you we're going to torture you you're not you're never coming out you're never seeing daylight and so it's got i have a feeling it has a lot of patriots you know shaking in their boots why well, i can't go well i'm not going to go march i'm not going to go stand in the capitol i'm not going to do anything i'm, I'm just going to stay home mind my own business grow my tomatoes and that's about it in the meantime it, it, boy i tell you it's it's so smart and it's so by design that they did that because you know obviously there's videos showing that there was no insurrection right Right. There, there wasn't. So but they're 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 gaslighting everybody. And so everybody's terrified. So if they're terrified of jail time, God forbid, they're terrified of, of doing anything similar to what happened in 1776. It will not happen here. I have to tell you something, though, OK, that if we don't stand up here in the U.S., humanity ends here. Well, I have to agree with you. I watched something happen. Uh, with the January 6th incident that related to a personal friend that we had interviewed on our show. At that time, I was doing a show called Crisis in America, and we interviewed Navy Chaplain Presley Stutz, who was a close friend to Donald Trump. And the thing about Presley is he did not take the vaccine. He wasn't interested in getting it. He had a background in military, and he knew something was wrong with the vaccine. And so he did not tell people that it was a good thing to do. It was his personal choice not to take it. So he had done a few interviews and this and that, and he also frequented 
everything that uh, President Trump did. So he was uh, he was on his way up there to the January 6th thing. And what happened is him and a group of other patriots, all with Christian backgrounds, they were standing there. And um, right beside of him was another senator, you know, that was close by. And Presley saw the police uh, around the White House opening gates and letting people go in. I mean, willingly letting people, letting groups that were obviously dressed up that looked like Black Lives Matter people. You know, they wear a specific, you know, Mm -hmm. they wear black clothing and they're easily identified. And so he watched the campus police there let these people in so after the incident the senator told presley he said you know you should call the fbi and tell them what you saw so presley did (laughs) well what happened was he was attacked all of a sudden they were investigating him they were following him on social media they were threatening with arresting him all kinds of horrible treatment and he told the senator he said i thought they would want to know what i saw and presley was a totally credible credible person but he was friends with president trump so to make a long story short after being harassed and everything by the fbi a little bit later i guess probably a month or so after january 6th Presley developed COVID. Oh, God. Both him and his wife. So his wife was very sick. Hmm. Presley was worse. And so they took him to the hospital where he was admitted. And for a long time, he tried to stay off the ventilator. He did not want that. But they gave him, they would not give him ivermectin or other recommended drugs by I guess you would say holistic doctors that were saying, hey, studies show in India that when given this medication, that they had like a 95% uh, success rate at living, you know? Hmm. So he wasn't able to get the medication that he requested. So they put him on resmizidir. And what happened is he had to be put on a ventilator. Why? Why? Because that medication is known to affect your kidneys and shut your kidneys down. Mm -hmm. Well, so his wife had gotten better and went home. And this is what I saw that happened. And it was the the horriblest thing I've ever seen. On Presley Stutz page, he had been, you know, updating, you know, I'm in the hospital. I'm not doing good. And and then he said, I'm going to go on a respirator i don't want to but they say that's what they have to do and i'm just trusting that i'll be able to go home and thank you for praying for me well what happened is all of these trolls came on his timeline and mocked him calling him names telling him if you get if you repent and say that you'll take uh the vaccination then maybe god will heal you mocking him calling him names and whenever myself or other patriots came on there and said hey leave this man alone he's he may be dying and you're attacking him and trying to take down his character they got 10 times worse i've never seen such hate such spirited meanness in people and when i looked up some of the comments they were all had fake profiles. (laughs) So these people, they attacked him mercilessly. Even after he passed away, they attacked him. I tell you, that was one of the most shocking revelations that I've ever seen for them to attack someone on their deathbed and to be so cruel and heartless. And I thought, is this what America has become? I mean, yeah, it was it, shocking. Have you it, seen things like that in uh, oh, oh, yeah. no. fellow Americans? Yes, I have seen that so many, many times. And so what's happening, and, and, and again, it's just um, an observation only because of uh, 
uh, the kind of connections that I have, uh, and I'm not talking about people connections. Um, and you can, we can explore that uh, maybe some other time, I guess. Um, but it's truly, I mean, just take a look. At, if people are willing to do things to children, if people use events, create events where people are killed, and people are killed. This is not just, uh, exactly. you know, a lot of times, yes, it's staged in the sense that it's created, it's designed that way. And then people are killed to create some sort of, uh, to push a narrative, right? So people are expendable because they're a means to an end. When you have a, uh, a force, um, a mindset that is capable of, doing that there's no conscience there's no 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 uh no guilt about it there's no remorse uh there's no soul okay then this is something that is coming from a different realm it's coming from a very low dimensional level i'm so and, glad you're saying this this mm -hmm. is right on the money mm -hmm. yeah and and it's it's been brought in while we've been duped and doped and subdued through various means, not only drugs, alcohol, Hollywood, uh, TV, uh, sports, whatever, whatever's numbing us, right? The fact that, you know, you're a single mother and you have to have three jobs, whatever that is that's keeping us entertained, this thing has come through our back door and through rituals, you know, uh, sacrifices of all sorts of, ch especially the children that, that disappeared by the millions, okay? Right. The things that they do, this has not been addressed and it has not been stopped. And through our silence, even though we may know it, subconsciously, spiritually may know it, a lot of people go to church and probably pray about, but nothing has really been done to stop it. And therefore it's, it, it's consensual. I it's agree. consensual. And, and you know. this is why I want you to talk a little bit about your book, Spiritual Warfare and the Art of Deception, The Hijacking of Spirituality, because this book talks about how many of us have been duped mm -hmm. through false spirituality, gurus, yep. false yep. prophets. Tell us a little bit about that and why you wrote that book. I wrote that book because um, I was, again, that voice in the dark trying to wake up the what, what we call light workers or what they deem to be called light workers or they meaning the light workers <laughs> they're calling themselves light workers but they're workers not necessarily always for the light maybe for the false light but not necessarily for the highest light and the reason i say that is because when you see so many people that are um uh, gravitating towards this quote unquote new age type of uh, ideology where it makes a lot of sense, you know, wow, spirituality, you know, where you can create your own reality and then you're living in the mind and you're living in this ideal utopia. In the meantime, you're really living on the in the world where it's really like a fishbowl. And what's happening is that things are happening in the fishbowl and you know, contamination, you know, maybe there's uh, fish eating fish, maybe there's toxic chemicals being put in the water, and you're, you're into your own little bubble there. And eventually, it's going to reach you. And but you're, you're, see, you're the powerful one, you're the powerful little fish living in that fishbowl that could have done something to stop it. But you're so much into this utopic bubble that you've created yourself. And that you're really thinking, hey, I'm going to get out of this fishbowl one day. I'm going to go into a different pond. It's bigger. It's a fifth dimensional pond. I'm going to get out of there soon. So I don't really have to worry about the fish. And in the meantime, the water's getting contaminated. And it's eventually going to bite you in your butt. Right. So oh, the yes. reason I yeah, the reason I, I, I wrote it is because there were so many people so consumed into their own ascension program into their own spiritual edification that they forgot that they were in physicality for a reason. There is a reason that people are, you know, that they consider themselves, let's say, 
the word starseed or, you know, whatever dimensional higher beings that are coming in. And oh, this is good. This is good. You know, they're coming in. Yeah, they're coming in. They're being incarnated. And what are they doing? Gee, I'm going to prepare myself to come right back. So wait a minute. Wait, stop. You just came from there. You came here for a reason. You incarnated. You came into a body for a reason. There is no reason. You already come supposedly, right? If that's what you're claiming, that you're a star seed and you're all this, you're coming with all this knowledge, all these gifts, and you're telling me you're preparing yourself to do what? Co go right back? Uh, th does that make any sense? Or is it that you're coming into a world like this one that is so dense, so difficult, so much, uh, so many challenges and hoops that you've got to go o over and stuff? Why in the heck would you do that if you if you did not have to come here to use that physicality and, and apply all the gifts that you have, all the knowledge that you have to be that light, be the beacon, show the way, wake people up. It's not about your ascension. It's about the ascension of everybody else, giving them oh, a shot. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that gave me cold chills. I love that. Right. And, you know, when you talk about the art of deception, let's go back to the children. You know, they are mm -hmm. hijacking Correct. their childhood and doing yes. things to get them into their world. You know, Correct. The, the thing that I've been told the most is you look for pedophiles in areas where there's lots of children. And where yes. is that? Schools, yep. churches, Boy Scouts, youth groups. They go there because why? It's access to our children. So that's, let me that's why they're doing the the lap dances and the oh, yeah. uh, all of this stuff in schools and trying to introduce them to that type of sexuality because they have access to the children. So let me explain why 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 that is happening especially now right again i am letting you know that, that this is all by design okay by a very very high intelligence not necessarily a good one okay and so the whole point is to convert to this world to actually eradicate most of humanity and anything else that's left over um uh, they're they're going to be obviously enslaved for for a reason OK, it's food in many, many different levels, not only, uh, you know, physical food, but, the, the, you know, the the energy, uh, the frequencies that we we give when we're suffering. That's also food. Food is called louche. OK, so what they're doing with the children is, is that they remember I, I, I I'm telling you, I have conscience of, of being conscious of the, the fact that um, of the fact that I'm not even sure if I'm using the right word that who I was and what my purpose was at a very, very young age. And that's because children have a, a very strong connection still to the realms that they came from. Okay. So when you contaminate a child, you are already taking away that godliness, that connection. And so that, that whole point is to stop, you know, stop the connection, stop the connection, stop the connection. And then on top of that, then you stop the reproduction of the, of, of the humanity. So you stop the connection to, to the divine. So now, now you're, a, you're a prisoner of the, the darker uh, forces that are here now. And then on top of that, you can't even reproduce because the children are being conditioned to to not reproduce. Why? Because they're changing their sexes. They're, they're they're getting mutilated. Right. This is the new campaign now. And so this is what this is. Um, they're using on top of that the children for sacrifice. Right. For right. They're eating eating parts. They're using it for adrenochrome production. So they're using the most innocent the closest thing to what we term God or creator or source, okay, that divine realm, they're desecrating it, okay, for on purpose, because right. the whole point is to eliminate that the mankind or humankind that was done in the, you know, the image of the creator. Right. And um, you mentioned that this is a feed for them on many different levels, the innocence is a greater feed to them than anything is yep. to steal that energy from their their innocence. And that's Correct. why you see so many children being abused by parents, yep. by family members, by churches, by the elite, by Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood, it's disgusting how many 
well-known actors are pedophiles. It's all part of the plan because, you know, again, they're promised fame, they're promised wealth, they're promised power, and they're promised immortality. And so when they, you know, and in order to get it, hey, you know what, you've got to do this, this, that, and the other, and we've got to film you doing it. So, um, yeah. They, blackmail. They got to have the blackmail. They have to. They have to. And so they have to do that. And notice now, of course, a lot of people are already aware that when you look at the Super Bowl and you look at the uh, the Grammys and you look at the Oscars, uh, what which of those shows doesn't usually have somebody displaying a satanic symbol, satanic uh, staging? I mean, you tell me. I mean, everywhere you look, it's this. They don't hide it anymore, Eric. They don't. They don't, they don't. hide it. And, you know, let's mention, of course, Jeffrey Epstein. And all the Hollywood elites uh, and the powers to be, the billionaires that went to Epstein Island, not once, not twice, some of them as much as 26 to 30 times. And what was the thing that Jeffrey did? He was a pedophile. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt in my mind that he didn't invite them there. Oh, if you if you're with this crowd, you can have anything you want. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, if it's a child, it doesn't matter. It'll stay here. Well, this was something used by MK Ultra years and years ago yeah. with the enemy. When they brought them over from other countries, they would connect them with prostitutes and say, oh, we're going to make sure your time here is is worth everything to you. And they would do that. But they also filmed it. This is something that he did. He has so much evidence against top names. And you know what? They still have yet to release all of that information. They're still protecting him. Mm -hmm. So I hate that our children are a pawn in this war because they are our future. Mm -hmm. And yep. they are our lifeline for humanity surviving. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, understand something there they're not so much protecting Epstein they're protecting themselves right uh, they're all they're all in it they're all in it and so yeah it's like one hand washes the other you know and it, we're, it's a big club a very big club I had, I don't know many many years ago I think it was after I can't remember if after or before I wrote the book it was, might have been after I wrote both books I went into I dove into the dark web a friend of mine told me hey this is where everything all the evil starts and so uh, I was told how to get in I got in when you go in there you cannot unsee what you see you just cannot I've heard people who work in that say that that you can't help but take some of it home no it's you you can't you can't shake it you can't get, get it out of you but n now I know this is not a conspiracy theory this this is not theory this is not a story it's none of that it's it's true and it's the bigger part of the iceberg okay we're living in the tip the internet that we know of is just a little tip on the top this is the majority of the iceberg at the bottom and it's horrific it's demonic it's the worst of, of it's just not even you can't you can't conceive it you cannot conceive it. Uh, the things that you can possibly imagine that could be worse in, in, in the human condition is existing in there. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is, is, again, the only things that are at the only way that this is occurring and in these so-called uh, shells, uh, biological shells that we know as human people or, or human beings that are really not the human beings we know of, these people are animated by something other than a soul and i agree i totally yeah. agree they're all, all living in 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 that world of internet trading and whatnot and the things they do to kids you can't you cannot even imagine there's totally no conscience with them no no conscience no. and i have to uh, mention that you also wrote a book called getting back to source tools for connection protection and empowerment is that one of the reasons that you wrote this book? Because I know myself, I need tools to help shield me from some of these experiences. And many people that go through it, they're just like stunned and they need help as well. H how do you feel that 
reading this book can connect people to their higher source and to tools to help them get by just day to day? Well, there are specific uh, instructions and techniques that I have used ever since I was a child um, that are known in um, in the world. It, it, this is not just something that I just came up with. Uh, th- these are things that have helped me personally so I can testify that they work, uh, that shield you, protect you, they help guide you, and empower you. Because again, my whole point is, we cannot be in this body experiencing everything that is happening and just stay silent because our silence is consent. So that's why we see what's going on. So, but if you feel empowered because you are shielded and protected, I promise you that using these shields and protection devices that I put, that I uh, address in the book, they're going to help you stay protected so that not a hair on your head is, is, is moved. And this is directly from the Christian Bible. It's like not a hair okay, from your head will be perturbed, even though, you know, the worst can be happening in the world around you in the mundane, you are totally centered, connected to divine power. And then you can, you know, maneuver within this uh, false uh, world that we're living in so that you can, you know, be the light of the world as well. We all need to connect together, not only, in other words, the time of going solo and lone wolf, those days are over. Honestly, we need, to, we need to unite. We need to come from that same understanding. We need to know that we are empowered by the, the you know, the, the divine love and, 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 and empowerment of God. We, we are, you know, direct creations, okay, from our divine source. And we have nothing to fear. But we, we have to understand, too, that we are in a spiritual war. This is war, okay? The other side does not play fair. They will never play fair. They don't play by our rules. So we are engaged in a warfare that we're thinking we're going to give this other uh, the opponent a rose when they don't resonate with roses. See, so we're, we're talking this beautiful rhetoric and let's pray and let's just visualize that beautiful world that we want to see. No, it takes that. You need to put that into your mind. Yes, because that's your blueprint. That's what's going to move you forward. But you need to use your physical body to create that world. Okay. You need to do something, get up and do something. And that's the whole point. So the, the book getting back to source gives you all the tools that you need that have been proven to protect you, empower you and create this world that we need, but by action, we need to take action. I love that. We can't just stand by and not do anything because basically we've done that in the past and it's just compliance. Yes. It's like saying, well, that doesn't bother me. I don't care. So, so what they're doing this at schools with our children or, you know, doing uh, therapy at six years old for transitioning. I mean, it's not my problem. No, we can't do that because not saying anything, your voice is lost and we've got to start speaking up. I mean, it could be just something little. You don't have to have a lot of money to do it. You just have to open your mouth and speak the truth. I mean, speak the truth. I mean, I personally, I've been around children all my life, you know, because I was a social worker. Mm-hmm. Well, no child I ever was around ever talked about this stuff at five and six years old. They wanted to play, get in the dirt, you know. Exactly. Uh, watch, you know, the old cartoons that were not woke, so to speak, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the little little things, you know, that they, like when I was growing up, this tells how old I am. I watched a cartoon <laughs> called Where the Root Children woke up and it was all about spring and you know flowers and you yep. know, beautiful things well now they have written into these cartoons you know things that are corrupt yeah you know to attack our children if we don't speak out about it then they're just going to keep on doing it well i mean a lot of uh, a, a lot of the problems that we're seeing too is that uh, many parents uh, either are okay with what's going on because hey 
you know, to be honest with you, the video games, for example, and the the television is a babysitter while we do our right. things, right? right? Right. So, and that's where it's got, but, but, you know, society has created that for us, right? Where we have to do that. We have no choice, but, uh, hey, uh, little Johnny, here's your uh, video game. You know, we'll sit down here for a couple hours and play and mom and, you know, it's going to be at her office if you're working from home. If not, hey, I'm, I'll be back in, in a couple hours, you know, just uh, make yourself lunch. So, so there's no parents. There, there, there is nobody there to to guide these children. Um, and remember too that there's a a, a movement, a, a an energy, a frequency that is uh, extremely low. We are being affected as well. Our brains are being affected by a lot of uh, electromagnetic uh, frequencies that are affecting us as well. Notice how crazy people are getting. Right. You, Look you at you what was it? Fourteen year olds that mm -hmm. attacked a city was that in new york i can't remember what um state. no i think it might have been chicago but i mean new chicago. york is every day new right, york but is every day year chicago. olds with yeah. with batons attacking yeah. people destroying stuff yeah, yeah. i mean people, when i was 14 i would have never did anything oh i know like that i would have been terrified yeah yeah kids but are who getting they learn it from right well, I mean, uh, you know, they're learning things in school. There's uh, uh, teachers that are planted. All right. They're getting yep. in there. They're planted to uh, to teach things and, you know, activism and things like that. Our kids are very vulnerable. Um, and, they, you know, they'll just plant seeds in there. Hey, you know, are you feeling this way at home? Are you do you uh, do you feel this way and that way? Well, this is why and this is what you need to do. And and so they they did that in, in, in every communist country. They, they remove the kids from the family. They go ahead and put them in indoctrination camps and then they come out little communists you know, right. all with their uniform and stuff. But so look, we are in, in deep trouble. All right. Are we, we as a, a, a species are in deep trouble. And if we don't do something, we will not be around much longer. And there I tell you what. will be a point of no return. No, I agree. And, and here's the thing that they're always talking about carbon emissions and trying to eliminate, uh, you know, uh, gasoline, you know, gas cars and what, Humanity is the carbon that they want to eliminate, period. Oh, yes, I agree. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and honestly, and I, I'm going to repeat it again. If we don't stand up here in the United States of America, w the humanity will end because of us. Because of us. Now, that is because a sobering message, but it needs to be sobering. I mean, all you have to do is just... Uh, be in social media, you know, just for an hour and you get a good dose of all the chaos that's going on. And it's really, really terrible. But it is. I know we have had such a super interesting conversation. We're going to make a 90 degree turn right now because <laughs> I want to give our audience just a smorgasbord of all the things that you are able to talk about, which I find so refreshing. Okay, I understand that you and I have a lot of things in common, and one of them is ufology and extraterrestrial contact. Now, do you feel comfortable talking about that, and do you want to share what you have encountered? Sure. I'm always comfortable to talking about that. Uh, a lot of people may not be, you know, ready to hear, um, or or maybe they are. I, it, you know, it doesn't matter, because it is what it is. Uh, I'm, first of all, um, I'm a... I'm a patriot. I'm a mom. I'm, a, I'm you know, uh, I'm a soul uh, that have, has, has experienced um, a lot on this planet. But when I was a very young and again, age five, when I started going to kindergarten, I think one of the assignments was that the teacher in kindergarten said, uh, can you please draw pictures of your family? All right. So we were all in this big table and we everybody's drawing pictures of their family in the little house and whatever in New York. And I drew a picture of a, a, a flying saucer on the ground, a different type of background, and what I thought were extraterrestrials. That was my family. Okay, so where the heck did I get that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I could tell you. Yeah, back then, uh, the, the, the television was pretty much black and white, and, uh, and they weren't really putting any type of movie. So anyway, to make a long story short, I was always looking up in the sky looking for these UFOs slash family that I thought, oh my gosh, because I don't belong here. Remember at four, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't belong here. Why am I here? 
why am I here? And then again, I knew that I had, there was a bigger mission, but I didn't want to be here because I kind of like felt I know what's coming and I don't really want to experience it. But yeah, I get it. But I, where's my family, right? So I'm always looking up all the way through. Um, I, th I think in my high school years, I stopped looking at the sky uh, for flashing lights and things like that. And then at 17, I encountered a fleet uh, out of a mothership. About 50 uh, scout ships came out and uh, surrounded my house and the whole neighborhood. My mom, my dad, my brother, myself, and all of the street rush hour traffic witnessed us. And so I fell on my knees crying, bawling, because I did not want to be here. And I, I kept asking, why, why, why am I here? Please take me with you, please. I don't want to be here. And, uh, and I was sobbing. I was uncontrollably sobbing. I was eating the dirt. I was so, so, so saddened. I was always depressed as a child. I wanted to, to leave. I didn't want to be here. So I hear, um, I, I don't hear, but I feel. I, it's almost like a, a, a download of knowing a conversation that's going on like pockets of information that are dropped and then they just become and then unfold with the information. So one of them was parked over my head and, um, and basically said, it's not time yet for you to be reunited with me or with us. The time will come. You have much to do. We have always been with you and we will never leave you. And wow. then when I, when I felt that love, it was coming from that ship. I, I stopped bawling. I totally understood. I thanked them. And they, when they re, when they felt that I was okay, they took off and boom, 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 different ones. They, they, they were there. There were five of them parked, you, you know, like, like in a line, each one was massive and they were glowing like, like, like breathing. Okay. And so that's how I know they were the higher uh, dimensional ones. Well, but yes. I bet our audience did not expect that. But no, I, I have to say, you know, there's millions of abductions and sightings every year. And only mm -hmm. one of those has to be true to prove we're not alone. Right. That and is what true. are the odds of all of them being lies? Hey, the ball is in our court. That is true. The good thing is that it was witnessed by hundreds of people. Right. Uh, this is not just my testimony. Um, it, it also appeared in the news that night. Of course, they stated it was a weather balloon, a weather balloon. Of course. So, <laughs> of course. So, yeah. No but, weather balloon trick. <laughs> but uh, but I've been in contact uh, with them since then. So. Wow. Well, yeah. we'll save all of that for another show. I want to ask you just to comment briefly on this and then we'll wind up. Many people worldwide have been through COVID, loss of loved ones, isolation, economic and social extremes, lots of confusion. What would you say to the people right now who are listening that are overwhelmed and are feeling kind of hopeless? Is there hope? There is absolutely hope. There is always hope. And that's the reason that you and I are speaking right now, is I want to let everyone know that there is hope, but we also have are responsible okay we're custodians of this planet we're here for a reason uh we are not sheep we will not be kicked around we need you to stand up and be courageous just like david against goliath uh, took a little child to take a rock and, and knock that beast down we will do the same we are many more than david we're many davids and i need you to to, to step up to the plate and get it done isn't that why you contacted me a few days uh, ari that is that is just out I've, of the blue i received a message from her and uh it was like we clicked and i knew this is something that we must do and she did too i call it the synchronicity of minds mm -hmm. yep. and that's what we're going to be doing so i really look forward to that i want to say that there are a lot of topics that we'll be speaking on and one of them is I watched Elon Musk the other day when he did a Tucker Carlson show and he was talking mm -hmm. all about AI, which is artificial intelligence. Now, that is a fascinating trend that's going on right now because, boom, just out of nowhere, there's all these people saying, warning, it's going to go out of control. It can destroy humanity. And I was really quite alarmed at what Elon said. He said there is a human trait they are teaching AI 
that spells a lot of trouble for humanity. In fact, some of these AI programs, I know Google has their own AI and there's other platforms that are coming up. I think even Elon is going to have a chat, uh, let's see, truth chatbot with artificial intelligence. So all of this is coming up and Elon is saying we should be concerned. So our next show will be talking about what are they teaching AI to do and why does it spell trouble? Doesn't that sound intriguing? <laughs> it, 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 it's a must topic. We, we need to address this. Uh, people need to know that it's just not something that it's a, ooh, what a cool gadget. This thing does everything for me. No, we need to know what's behind it. It's a lot of evil behind it. And um, yeah, we need to address that big time. Well, I've had some personal experience with AI in the last few days that are quite alarming to me. So I'll, I'll we'll discuss that in our next show because we've got lots of content to discuss. But, Ari, if people want to buy your book, where do they go to do that? They can go to Amazon, um, Amazon.com. They could uh, Google my name, um, R E A R I, and then K O. P like Paul, E L like Larry. Um, they could Google spiritual warfare and the art of deception. Uh, the other book is Getting Back to Source, Tools for Connection, Protection, and Empowerment. Uh, they could buy it on Amazon. They can go to Barnes and Noble. Uh, they can get it on Kindle, whichever way. Um, but you, they can find it. It's uh, it's available. I strongly recommend uh, reading it. It's um, it, it, it'll it'll shed a lot of light into how uh, the spiritual uh, religion, spiritual communities, uh, New Age, and everything have been infiltrated by the darkness to be able to disempower people. Wow. Well, I want to read that myself because there's always room to learn more. But, Ari, I want to thank you. I mean, you have discussed so many things and been right on target. Like I said, it's refreshing for me to find someone who knows and understands what's going on in our world right now. And just being able to share your voice and for us, like you say, to be a voice in the wilderness calling out to people saying, hey, it's not too late to start now. We can turn this around. There is hope, which goes back to our tagline again. There is always a light in the darkness, and that's what the Beacon Podcast wants to do. Ari, I hope the rest of your day is wonderful, and to our audience, tune in again. We'll be putting up another show. We're going to be on BitChute and Rumble for right now, but there's other platforms that are going to be coming up. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you guys again in two weeks. Thanks a lot. Ari, thank you. Thank you.